Hello viewers, welcome to News Health Plus. Today is Teacher's Day. On this auspicious day, we pay tribute to the great educationist, philosopher and former president of India, Bharat Ratna Dr. Salvapalli Radhakrishnan. So today with us, Kavita Chiring ma'am. Hello ma'am. She, uh, she is a faculty member of English department, Bibora College. On this great moment, we News Health Plus wish you a very happy Teacher's Day. Thank you, Bandita, and uh, my sincere gratitude to the entire uh, staff and uh, members of News Health Plus. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so, ma'am, first of all, our viewers want to know about yourself. Uh, before I um, talk about myself, I would like to thank you and uh, News Help Plus for inviting me today on this uh, auspicious occasion of Teacher's Day. Uh, it's a great uh, mark of respect for me and I am deeply honored and humbled by your uh, gesture. Thank so you. thank you so much. Uh, so ma'am, uh, you have been teaching for many years. Yes. yes. Uh, so how many years? Uh, well, uh, my present uh, occupation is at Biborwa College, as you are aware. So at Biborwa College, I'll be completing uh, 10 years. So this is a special year for me as well. This is December. I'm going to complete uh, 10 years. But I have been teaching uh, from much before that. So overall, I, I can say I have been teaching for at least uh, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you all have the opportunity to get closer to the young generation as well as and know know more about them yes yes definitely because i have been in uh, close contact with them you are very right mm -hmm. so yes i uh, in the beginning of my career uh, i didn't feel that i could have said much about them but today at this point i think i i know about them slightly more than i would have 15 years back so yes yes so i want to know about the generation gap uh, what exactly would you like me to talk about here? Uh, means what? Uh, what do you mean by the generation gap? Mm -hmm. We when we talk about this mm -hmm. topic, then um, old generation versus young generation. Mm -hmm. There's a many conflict between two. There's two generations. Right. So right. What do you want to? So uh, basically, uh, if I understand you correctly, uh, you were asking me if you think uh, if I think that the generation gap exists. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, yes, I mean, if, if we look at it numerically, mm -hmm. uh, definitely the generation gap exists because a, a parent and a child will have 20 to 30 or 40 years gap between them. A, a, an older sibling and a younger sibling will have a gap. Yes. Uh, numerically, yes. But I feel that we make much more of the um, generation gap than it actually is, you know, because I think that it's also a matter of the mind yes. because uh, personally at times I, f I feel more comfortable with somebody probably 20 years older to me uh, more than somebody who is my age yes. so it does exist but um, I mean uh, it is uh, uh, I mean we can transgress it we can surpass it it's, it's not insurmountable yes. this is something that we can overcome old generation always mm. blame the young generation right. like they have no moral values, social mm -hmm. values, etc. Mm -hmm. So, do you also agree with them? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, uh, I think this is a matter of perspective. And whenever something new comes, we are always uh, resistant towards change, right? Yes. And social norms are not uh, universal truths that don't change. They mm -hmm. also change with time. Yes. Uh, so, I don't think it is fair to judge a new generation from an age-old perspective, I, I, I think everybody should change with time and judge uh, a particular generation with current, um, uh, you know, from the perspective of current social norms. So, yes, of course, there are certain universal unchangeable values which we should not, never uh, trespass, like, uh, uh, you know, honesty, truthfulness. These will never be questioned. Yes. But other things, you know, we cannot keep blaming the young, new generation for everything, yes. right? Because they are of a different generation. We have to understand their uh, historical context. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I also feel that, like, I'm also a youngster, yeah. so I also feel that, that every time they wants to blame us mm. but uh, i want to say them that 
uh, you have to understand us right. okay um this this world changes so fast right. so you have to adjust with us then we mm. also cooperate with mm. you then uh, i want to say that which you which the old generation want to tell us um not all the wrong that's mm. not like that mm. but not every time yeah that's not every time okay so i think we are we are on the same page i yes. i i i feel good because i have been able to understand your mindset right yes yes so what do you want to say or say about the mindset of today's young generation uh in what sense if you could kindly elaborate uh, this question like, when you want to uh, i want to ask mm-hmm. that a uh, mindset means that sometimes mm-hmm. they they don't they don't think that uh what they do mm-hmm. that everything is right mm-hmm. everything is correct mm-hmm. they don't they don't want to listen to their parents their guardians or mm-hmm. elder ones that what do you want to say about that uh the youngsters yes, uh, i yes. yeah i think what you are talking about is a very uh, quintessential problem that is there in adolescents and yes. uh, teenagers you know uh, scientifically speaking uh, that is related to their uh, development and i would say these are developmental needs because you see when somebody is growing up um, you know you are a child you are completely dependent on your parents now when you are in your adolescence what happens is that uh, your body mm-hmm. number one goes through a number of changes right i mean um, you are your your body is growing in size uh, youngsters are attaining puberty yes. so there are a lot of uh, physical changes so you need to cope with that then there are mental changes as well your brain is also developing very fast yes. so you are asking questions that you didn't ask as a child so who am i right you mm-hmm. are struggling with your identity you want to create your own sense of self you want to inculcate your a sense of independence so what happens is that uh, you uh, you explore mm-hmm. new areas and during this stage your risk taking abilities and your ability to ask questions these uh, multi this you know it increases yes. compared to uh, compared to you know your childhood mm-hmm. so and and this is not something that the teenager chooses i don't think the rebellion that is so characteristic of teenagers mm-hmm. is not something that the teenager chooses yes. it is something that that they can't help mm-hmm. because they are developing uh, and you know uh, there are research that shows that when you are uh, in your adolescence your brain is developing right the yes. neur- neurons of your brain uh, are developing but the entire brain i mean the different parts of the brain they don't develop at the same time so uh, the frontal part of the brain and people from the medical field um, would be able to explain this better yes mine is only a layman's perspective so the frontal part develops the last and mm-hmm. the frontal part is the one that tells us you know that asks us to uh, uh to think like uh, you know think before you act but that part because it develops at the end mm. in the adolescence that part is still not developed yes. so you you really don't think about consequences mm. right so what you ask like you know being rebellious or not listening to adults or uh, this is something that is part of their development it is a developmental need mm. and if we restrict that uh, i i don't think their development will be complete mm-hmm. so i feel that uh, yes you are right uh, uh, teenagers can be uh, rebellious youngsters may not listen to their parents uh, part of this is because of their uh, uh, development and part of that of course is because of upbringing right so mm-hmm. uh, with the right upbringing i think these issues can immediately become uh, minor issues a parent mm-hmm. if a parent um, or a caretaker or a guardian whoever is taking care of the uh, young adult or the adolescent mm-hmm. if they are uh, in tune with the uh, with the person concerned then this won't be an issue because the young person will feel comfortable uh, around the yes. caregiver so i i hope i have been able yes, to answer yes, your question yes yeah. um i think that over addiction of technology mm. can be the root cause of this situation because um people should know how to use the technology but um we can see that the young generation nowadays they use the bad side of the technology mm. so it is an effect of this technology uh are you are uh, i mean uh, i i you are saying that technology has negative Im- impact yes. uh so what do we mean by technology yeah. mean that uh over addiction mm. then overtime screening no, all right i mean but, but what would you put under technology uh 
social media social media yeah again that uh, i think it depends on how we are uh, looking at it because uh, like you said it also helps uh, youngsters in so many ways right yes. um, right from preparing for classes taking some online coaching and you know i mean uh, we we are now preparing for our nag visit at mm. bivorwa college and yes. one of the aspects uh, Uh, you know, on which NAC is going to mark us is digital literacy. So it is a good thing to be digitally literate. I mean, we now, you know, we should be, we should have our e-content. E-content development uh, is again an area that will get us marks. Yes. Uh, so who is this e-content for? It is for students. It is for the youngsters. We have um, in our college, we have WhatsApp groups uh, that we use for sharing materials. Uh, so... I think technology is not something that, that we can get away with. Yes, there are negative impacts like using the screen time. Mm. That is something I think uh, that that is a disease that has plagued all uh, age groups alike. I mean, yes. you, we can't just blame the teenager. Like even our parents and everybody like, you know, my aunt, uh, she has retired and most of the time she is like, you know, when we call her for a ritual at home, So the ritual is going on and where is my aunt? She's like playing Candy Crush. So on her phone. So my uncle, who is also retired, he's like always playing games on his phone. Mm. So this is a disease that has struck us everybody. Yes. But um, yes, the teenagers or the youngsters may be more susceptible to it again for their developmental stage. Yes. At this moment, they want to be experimental. Mm. At this point in their lives, uh, Uh, they have peer pressure, hmm. right? So they want to, at times, they want to match up to their peers. So they do what everybody else is doing. Yes. But I think as a society, we all are suffering from the ill effects of technology, hmm. not just the youngsters. Yes. Yeah. So I want to say that, okay, technology can use hmm. as for development, hmm. innovation, hmm. Uh, then it can also be used for the destruction. Hmm. Then we all know that Uh, using the technology, we can uh, we can reach the peak point of the knowledge, success, mm -hmm. as well as we also uh, we also remember that thing that is also used for the destruction. We all uh, we should know the both mm -hmm. side of the technology. You mean like, for example, weapons? Uh, would that be an example of yes, the destruction yes, you're yes. talking about? Yes, uh, totally. I mean. Uh, Everything. I, 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 I'm a firm believer of balance in the world. I think good and evil, they both, uh, these are the forces that maintain balance in our mm. evil, right? I mean, there cannot be day without night, night without day, and it will be meaningless. Yes. Day without night uh, will be meaningless. Night without day will be meaningless. So the opposite always, you know, I mean, the opposite always um, is required mm. for the definition of the self. So in that sense, technology is bound, anything is bound to have two sides. Yes. And uh, yes, you are right. Technology has been used for many destructive um, activities in the yes. world. But so is it used for many positive aspects. Mm. For example, take healthcare. Healthcare yes. is so advanced now yes. thanks to technology. So I think what we need to do is like not ban something, mm. right? Not say to the youngster that, you know, don't use technology. Technology is ruining you. Yes. That is why you have got uh, less marks in your exam. Mm. You know, such prescriptive remarks, I think, are futile, yes. right? We need to basically guide the teenagers, uh, youngsters, mm. adolescents, young adults, anybody, the present generation, as you say, we need to basically, in their lives, uh, we need to be there as uh, guides, guides, not control controllers, mm -hmm. right? But guides. Yes. Institute of Urology and Kidney Diseases. In short, IUKD is the first kidney-related super specialty hospital in northeastern India, based in Sonapur, Guwahati. Under the supervision of eminent urologist Dr. Arup Kumar Nath, IUKD is the modern-day healthcare hospital with various facilities related to kidney diseases. All kinds of laser technology in urology and nephrology related issues are available at IUKD. For the healthcare services and facilities at IUKD, we can be reached at 9864104444 and 8827216712. What about the mental health of this generation? Because mm -hmm. I 
as per I know that this generation is quite emotional mm. and mentally ill sometimes. I think as per your observation, uh, youngsters are struggling with their mental, mental health, health, right? Uh, yes, I think our, our viewers would also agree. We see uh, uh, many of our youngsters uh, suffering from ailments like depression and anxiety and uh, I mean uh, they, they many of them they tend to remain aloof mm. right they would like to uh, be uh, introverted not be outgoing so what is the cause of that uh, before I, I, I think um, I am not in a position to point the, at the cause of it because I feel that each case is a unique case case. and uh, you have brought up a very important matter because mental health is not something that we talk about Mm. right it is there is a certain taboo there is a certain stigma attached uh, to mental health in the Indian society in the Assamese society as well you will you will agree people don't like to talk about it Mm. Uh, but the fact is that mental health is very real it is as real as uh, uh, I mean, mental ailments are very real. Mm-hmm. They are as real as physical ailments. Physical. So what happens when a person has, uh, I really like this um, example, a person has broken um, their leg. Mm-hmm. So you go and see them. So you don't say that, oh, you know, don't worry. If you just walk with me, your broken leg will recover. You give them time. You understand them. Now, if a person is struggling with depression, mm-hmm. what would you tell them? Just come watch a movie. Yes. It'll be all right. Right. Yes. So wh- why two different kinds of treatment? Treatment. Mm-hmm. Both are ailments. So there is a lack of awareness. Uh, and if this uh, that you, you said that um, there is a lot of uh, struggling yes. among the present generation. It, it was always there. And it's a great thing that we, we are acknowledging it. Mm. But the sad thing is that our youngsters don't have the platform to share what they are going through. Yes. Because number one, they may be, um, you know, they may be silenced mm. because, you know, there are parents who are not comfortable about talking um, talking about such things. They would say, you know, you should be strong mm. uh, or, you know, you, sh- you should not say such things. So where is the platform? Where will they share yes. their uh, struggles? And because they can't share their struggles, because there is no no awareness because there is no way to get cure because mm. you see these these are real ailments, ailments which have real actual diagnosis and there are treatments mm. for them but we don't have the mechanism to seek treatment so many of these uh, issues uh, mental is- health issues they remain un- uh, i mean unaddressed yeah. so what what happens if you have a wound and if you don't do anything to it it will start aggravating isn't it yes. the same with uh, mental health uh, issues so i i think what we really need is a mechanism that supports talking about and seeking help for any mental uh, health issues that we are suffering from it can be a small issue as well panic hmm. anxiety yes. right yes. yeah I think uh, they don't feel safe at home firstly uh, here we can put the matter of gender discrimination Okay. Okay. So, uh, when we suffer these things, like you cannot deny this topic at all, Mm -hmm. the gender discrimination that we all suffer at this same point. So, have you ever been through this type of behavior? Uh, Gender discrimination Discrimination. uh, 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 in relation to youngsters, right? Uh, I think uh, gender discrimination is a very um, real um, thing in the present world. We have not been able to achieve uh, what is called gender parity. Gender mm-hmm. parity means uh, equality between, um, you know, the two equality of the two uh, genders. So, no, not anywhere in the world, the hundred percent gender parity has not been achieved. But of course, the statistics vary country wise, and in India, uh, the the gap between the the gender divide mm-hmm. is uh, pretty high. Uh, so. Everybody is a victim of that, including youngsters. I, I hope I have answered your question. Yes. Uh, if uh, there is something more about this. Yes. Like, have you ever been through this? Uh, uh, gender discrimination. discrimination. Not only at the home, at like uh, Anywhere. school, right, college, right. etc. I, I can't uh, think of anything right now personally. Mm-hmm. But I think in terms of... Uh, opportunities in terms of uh, 
Well, yeah, I, I think I can um, talk about something here. Yes, driving. Okay, yes. you see, uh, people think that, I mean, people believe, not think, mm -hmm. that women are terrible drivers. Yes. And men are good drivers. And many people think that men have this biologically, they are more um, inclined towards driving. Driving. Right. But I don't think so, right? What do you need to drive? You need a pair of hands, working hands, working legs, working brain, which both men and women have. Yes. Right? So why why there are so many male drivers and why there are so few female drivers? Why is that? And when women do drive, why are they not that confident? I think it is because of gender discrimination. They don't get equal opportunities to mm. drive. So like a boy will, a boy child will just take out the bike or whatever he has. It's, it's accepted that he will learn to ride a bike or ride, drive a car. But a girl does not have the same liberty. Yes. So me also, you know, you ask me, so I want to give you my example. So when I was um, a teenager, I really wanted to drive. Uh, so I, I did, my father, uh, who is uh, no more, uh, at that time he did teach me. But the opportunities that I got was limited. Mm -hmm. Like I would go out and then, you know, there would be a big gap. So I couldn't practice my driving, right? Uh, but my brother, he just learned. I don't know how he learned driving. So I, I don't know if somebody taught him or he just learned with his friends. So boys, they just go out so often. I mean, they, they can go out yes. so often. They have such big groups. Nobody asks them questions. They can just go out, mm. right? And yes. so when, when you are free to move, you are free to learn, yes. isn't it? Something that I didn't get. Now, at this age also, like when I, after I have joined Vibora, I, I am now no longer a young person. But then when I wanted to pursue my driving, which was incomplete, mm -hmm. uh, I had learned driving, but I was not a proficient driver. So when I wanted to begin driving, again, there were a lot of, what to say, um, restrictions, obstacles in my path. Yes. Uh, so it always comes from, from a male member of your household. It can yes. be a father, it can be a brother, uh, it can be a... Uh, husband, husband exactly <laughs> and uh, sometimes from women as well because mm -hmm. what happens is like we internalize the patriarchal mindset right yes. uh, um, it, it's so necessary that it's a man who is uh, who, who is um, creating obstacles for even a woman will yes. because what we do is we just think in a patriarchal manner so there are a lot of obstacles um, in my way it was not easy like mm -hmm. a grown woman who is earning her own money who mm -hmm. can buy her own car and yet i had to face so many obstacles to learn driving that's not fair isn't yes. it so it was I, I it required a lot of uh, willpower a lot of rebellion to assert myself and now uh, i am a good driver i'm a proficient driver but even now when i am out on the roads i always um, hear comments like if somebody is driving badly it must be a female driver yes, yes. right <laughs> So that's a very real um, instance of gender discrimination in my life. Yeah. So uh, now yeah. I want to <laughs> now I want to know about this. How do you react to this situation, like not driving or opportunities? Like I this? think it. You need to be very assertive. Yes. I. You have to be assertive. Uh, the society will try to demotivate you. Mm -hmm. uh, driving is just as an example. In many ways, you will be demotivated at. You know, you'll be made to feel that you cannot. Yes. At times, uh, I did feel that maybe driving is not for me. Maybe I will never be able to drive. But then you need to you need to have confidence in yourself, right? You need to uh, minimize all the noise, all the chaos that outsiders are, you know, creating. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be an outsider except your inner self. And you need to listen because my inner self always told me that you, you have to drive. Because you see, independence... Uh, without driving, I think, I mean, you have to be mobile. You have to have your own mobility. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you need to drive a car. Yes. It can be a scooty, anything. But yes. you need to be independent. Independently, you should be able to go outside. Uh, outside. Otherwise, my education or my my financial independence, it's, uh, it's not complete. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I think asserting yourself is very important. Yes. Yeah. Like, actually, we suffer all these type mm -hmm. of things many times. Like... Um, this is from the grassroots level actually mm. like home mm. yeah like 
uh, even people always uh, appreciate other girls mm. like uh, when PV Sindhu, mm. then Hima Das, mm. and everything when they get the medals, medals, then they always support them. It's okay, mm. um, see that the girls yeah. won the medals, yeah. but if the matter comes their own daughter then do, they don't appreciate mm, it mm. even uh, you cannot even imagine such like things happen in the rural area or even mm, the well educated mm, home mm. that uh, the parents used to bully mm. their own married daughter mm. that please remain silent always mm. like don't tell anybody mm. on your household things that's your house now mm. then they like uh, be the simple mm. sophisticated mm. woman be the good daughter yeah. first then wife mother yes. and you die the ideal yes. ideal woman Our, yes yeah. uh, then in this type of the structure mm-hmm. of ideal woman they they forget their Re- own yes. hope own dream mm-hmm. or aim mm-hmm. etc so um, any message to our youngsters i i think there is one thing that i wanted to it didn't come up uh, while we were talking but i have noticed one thing um uh, and you'd be in a better position to um uh, speak on that i feel that the attitude of the students uh, regards to teachers mm. has changed because when i was your age uh we used to we, we used to be very respectful towards our teachers now youngsters i what i think is that maybe they have a different way of showing respect i'm not saying that they don't respect their teachers but the way they show their respect is very different mm. because the age is different and um, so uh the the fear that we had or the you know the inhibitions that we had mm. um, around the teacher yes. i don't think it is there anymore which is a good thing because uh, it's best if the teacher and the student are comfortable if the mm. student feels comfortable with a teacher only then uh, uh, they can learn better yes so i definitely there is a change in attitude there is a change in teacher student dynamic is mm. 100% is changed uh, but i don't want to uh look at it in a negative way i don't want to say that um teachers they don't respect us anymore mm. i don't want to say that what I, i i think is that their way of showing respect or the way of approaching this relationship has changed because the times are different yes right you can't compare something of 20 years back with the present times so they they have they are born in a different time they are born in digital times so they, they are different mm. from us mm. so my uh, message to our viewers our young viewers is that uh, be yourself uh, and uh, be yourself in the sense that all of us we have a gut feeling so when we are growing up so many we have so many choices we have so many options we can do this we can do that we can go with somebody we can go out with somebody we can make make a new friend i mean we can buy something we can do so many things the whole our whole lives are ahead of us but we have to make decisions based on our gut feeling mm. what 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 are our instincts telling us what is good for us what is and you see sometimes it may not be easy for us to differentiate between right and wrong we don't know yes. because we are too young we don't have a clearly formulated conscience but we have our guts mm. we just know that i shouldn't do this and if that is the case then we shouldn't do it so at this in our formative years uh, i think because you see youngsters also don't have a lot of experience because they are young yes. right and experience that i have uh, a youngster will not have they will learn with their experience mm. so how to be on the right path i think you can be on the right path if you follow your guts if you follow your instinct so that is my message to all okay so we all know that physical health and mental health is inseparable we cannot separate the physical health and mental health that is why we should take care of our mm-hmm. physical health to take care of our mental health and also we should take care of our mental health to take care of our physical health <laughs> so ma'am thank you once again for our coming and gives us your valuable time thank you Uh, I'm so confident that our viewers uh, our viewers have inspired from your words. Uh, I'm also inspired by communicating with you today. Um but uh, due to lack of the time it's impossible to know more from you but it will be honor for me to have you once again with us here. Um so dear viewers with this comes to end today's session. Hope will this interview is fruitful for you. We are soon coming up 
with more such interviews till then stay tuned and have a nice day thank you thank you thank you ma'am Thank you.